So welcome everyone. Uh, today we'll be discussing chapter 17 from hands-on design patterns with C++. Um, the first part of this chapter, it talks about decorator pattern. So what is the motivation behind the decorator pattern? It is to extend functionality of an existing class at runtime. Um, the class being decorated retains the same interface, both the class and the decorator for it have identical interface, meaning they are completely interchangeable, um, meaning the decorator instance can be used anywhere the original instance can. A uh, decorator adds functionality um, around um, the methods of an object being decorated uh, and also forwards to the, uh, to the original functionality. And it is a flexible alternative to subclassing. And here's what I mean by that. Excuse my scribbles. I uh, sketched this out on, a, on an iPad. Uh, but here's an issue with, with subclassing. Imagine, imagine you have a socket interface. And from there, you want to implement two types of sockets, TCP and UDP. Now, all is fine until you realize, hmm, I would like to be able to compress the data going in and out of the socket or encrypt it. So you end up subclassing again. Um, finally, you may decide, oh, well, I would like a socket that's compressing the data first and then encrypting it. And then yet again, you end up with more subclassing. So this can quickly, um, this can quickly create an explosion in the inheritance hierarchy. And decorator uh, is the pattern that addresses this, and it doesn't as such. You still remain, you still re keep the socket uh, interface. You will still create your two um, concrete classes for TCP and UDP socket. And then the decorator exists alongside these, um, these TCP and UDP versions. And here you can see the decorator um, inherits from the socket. So it's going to have the same exact interface. And it also uh, keeps an instance of another um, socket interface. And from there, you derive from the decorator, um, you can add, you know, compression decorator on a socket, for example, <clears throat> or encryption. And because of this decorator pointing back to the original socket interface, uh, and because it inherits from it, it can be composed. Um, a decorator can be applied to an already decorated class. And I'll, I'll show you an implementation right now. So here's how you would start uh, with something like, uh, like the socket uh, example. Uh, on the left, you see a simple iSocket interface consisting of just two pure virtual methods for sending and receiving the data. And on the right, you see a socket decorator interface, which is also an abstract class, uh, but it inherits from socket publicly. And it contains one extra uh, constructor and a method that allow you to set um, whatever the decorator class is going to be, a pointer to it in this case. Uh, and then query through the get decorated method. Now, this is a non-owning uh, decorator, meaning it, it only points to an object it wants to decorate, but it doesn't actually control its lifetime. Uh, in a book, author uh, shows decorators that uh, hold unique pointer to the object they are decorating, so that would be an owning decorator. And here's uh, two simple implementations of two different decorators. As I mentioned earlier, on the left, you see a compressed socket decorator. Um, it accepts the socket and then some sort of a STD string parameter, which in this case, I was just uh, going to pass the name of the uh, compression algorithm. It calls the iSocket decorator constructor, passing it the, the pointer to the iSocket, uh, initializes its members, and then it overrides the two uh, virtual methods, the send and receive. And you can see that uh, here, just prints out something saying that, hey, I'm going to compress this many bytes using this algorithm, and then I'm going to get decorated, just get, get, the, get the pointer to the object I'm actually decorating, and forward, um, forward whatever I did with the buffer to the original object. Uh, receive, <clears throat> similarly, uh, will first uh, call the receive on the original object, and then 
it will do some sort of decompression uh, before before returning. On the right side, uh, you see an encrypted socket decorator. The uh, principle is the same as the one on the left, except this one will uh, attempt to encrypt some data and then pass it on to whatever object it's decorating. So with this approach, you can now chain these uh, decorators together. So you have you can start off with a TCP socket pointing at 1111 uh, port 53, and that is your TCP um, variable. That's that's the instance of just the plain TCP socket. You can then, in the second line, create a compressed socket decorator, passing it the original uh, socket that you created, and say a zip compression algorithm. Similarly, an encrypted socket decorator. Um, you pass the same socket and some uh, encryption algorithm that you choose to use. And finally, on the last line, you see uh, how the decorators are chained. So you're starting with the TCP socket, and you are adding an encrypted socket decorator to it using RSA algorithm. And then that you pass to a compressed socket decorator using TGZ compression algorithm. Um, now, the order of these chainings may be, may be important, um, but in a case of compression and encryption, keep in mind that um, you want to compress the data first uh, before you encrypt it. You do it the other way around. Encrypted data is or should be indistinguishable from random noise, therefore not compressible at all. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when, when applying multiple decorators. Um, you got to remember the order in which the operations will be performed, and it will be from the outermost um, decorator through the innermost and finally to the uh, to the object. So in the last line, when you use the CMP ENC ECP instance, it will compress the data first, then encrypt it, and then finally send it to the TCP object. So that's decorator uh, for for objects and instances of objects. Uh, author also talked about uh, something like a debug decorator and a locking decorator, which was a more general um, general purpose decorator meant to uh, to add some additional functionality around a function call or anything really that's that's callable. Uh, author mentioned issues with, with his implementation there, uh, that it didn't quite work with, um, with functions that return uh, any, any values, but I'm not sure when the book was written, but I believe since C14, uh, there's there's this concept of decal type auto, which which is used for perfect forwarding of the return value. So that that's not an issue one bit. And you can see it in this uh, in this top um, top code snippet that it's just a class template, takes a constant reference to some some callable and some additional string. And in the function call operator, um, accepts variable number of um, arguments, first prints out the message that you gave it, uh, and then finally forwards to, to the callable. Uh, and on the bottom snippet, you can see examples of uh, how this can be used. So I create a uh, debug decorator, give it a lambda function that just prints hi, uh, and then additional message hello. Uh, this one doesn't return any value, it's fine. The second one, the debug2 decorator, um, is given a lambda function that takes two parameters, that returns a value, and adds an additional message of x times y. Um, I don't have it here in this example, but where I call debug2, two, uh, two comma two, I could assign the return uh, value of this to, to a variable, and it works just fine. Uh, I also took the liberty of creating a slightly more complex implementation of this uh, this debug decorator concept. Uh, if you if you would need to capture the return value, um, do something with it, maybe log it, whatever, and then finally return it, you could do it in this implementation uh, where you see the else return callable. Uh, over there, you could open up a block of code and uh, do whatever you choose to do it on with the return value of the callable. Um, and this um, this uses the, the decal type auto, which is the perfect forwarding of the return type, as well as const expression um, idea, which means this this if statement, if const expression no return, that's actually evaluated evaluated at compile time, uh, not not at runtime, and that's how you're able to um, 
to either have a function that doesn't return anything or returns some uh, something returned from uh, from the callable. 